All right, let's take a look at these infinite unions and infinite intersections. Um, and I'll try to go over both the formal way of establishing uh, the uh, values as well as an informal way of doing it. Uh, the first one, the infinite union of this. So this is the union of the interval from negative 1 to 1, union the interval from negative 2 to 2, union the interval from negative 3 to 3, and so on. So I need to take the union of all of these intervals, and in this problem, the intervals are getting progressively bigger. Well, the answer for this one is going to be the entire real line. So every real number is going to be in this union someplace. Now, notice that the answer is all real numbers as opposed to all integers. For example, like 2 and a half, 2 and a half is contained inside of this interval. So even though the endpoints are integers, the real number 2 and a half is inside there. So any real number you choose will be in at least one of these intervals, and therefore um, the uh, union of this will be all real numbers. Now if I take the infinite intersection, this will be negative 1 to 1, intersect negative 2 to 2, intersect negative 3 to 3, and so on. And again, the intervals are getting progressively uh, longer. And so if I take the intersection, the intersection will be just simply negative 1 to 1. If I take a number like, say, a half, that's between negative 1 and 1, that'll be in, contained in every single one of these intervals. Every number that's between negative 1 and 1 will be contained in all of these. However, if I take something like a 1 and a half, 1 and a half will be in here, 1 and a half will be in here, 1 and a half will be in there, but 1 and a half will not be in the first one. So one and a half cannot be part of this infinite intersection. So those are the first two. Uh, next, let's take a look at this infinite union. So negative one, one, union negative a half to a half, union negative one third to a third, union uh, negative one fourth to a fourth, Oops. and so on. Okay, here the intervals are getting progressively smaller, so when I take the union, it's going to be the biggest one of these things, which will be negative 1 to 1. If I take any number between negative 1 and 1, including the endpoints, it will be contained in at least one of these sets, namely the first one. Also, if I take something that's outside of this range, like 2, 2 will not be contained in any of these things, so 2 cannot be contained as part of the union. Now, somewhat more interesting is the infinite intersection, negative 1 to 1, intersect negative a half to a half, intersect negative a third to a third, and so on. Okay, now it turns out the infinite intersection, we have intervals that are getting smaller and smaller, and the lengths of all these intervals are approaching zero. So it turns out that this thing only has one element in it. The, not this set containing zero. So zero is part of all of these sets. However, there's no other number besides zero will be contained in all of them. For example, uh, let's take a fourth. A fourth is not contained in the first three, and so therefore cannot be contained in the union. A millionth will be contained, well, uh, will be, cont I'm sorry, I got that backwards. One fourth is contained in the first four, but it would not be contained in the one from a one fifth to negative one fifth. So one fourth cannot be part of the infinite intersection. If I took a millionth, it would be in the first million of these intervals, but it would not be in the million and first. So uh, if I have any other number besides zero, it won't be contained in at least one of these, and so therefore it can't be part of the infinite intersection. So this infinite intersection is really a set containing only one number, zero. Okay, next uh, we have one, two, union one half to two, union one third to two, union and so on. Okay, so the right endpoint stays the same, but the left endpoint is changing. Clearly the right edge is still going to be two. The more interesting case is the left endpoint. It turns out that the answer is going to be 0, 2, where I have a parenthesis on 0. If I take any positive number, it will be contained in at least one of these sets. So 1 over a million will be contained in at least one of these sets. 
no matter how small, close the number is to zero, as long as it's positive, it'll be in. But zero itself does not belong to any of these. Zero's not in there, zero's not in there, zero's not in there, and so on. So zero can't be in this union because zero is not contained in any of these sets. Okay, lastly, we have one, two, intersect one, two, one half two, intersect one third two, and so on. The sets are getting progressively larger, so the intersection will simply be uh, one, two, close brackets. So one will be an element of all of these sets, two is an element of all these sets, and everything in between one and two will be an element of all those sets. So the infinite intersection will be um, the closed interval from one to two.